Okay, hello. This is um, Daniel Guys from ED Films. I'm the creative and technical director here um, for another Twitch stream, another afternoon Twitch stream, at least where I'm from. Um, what we are going to take a look at today is finishing up more of that scene that we were working on. I'm just getting myself all set up here. Um, da -da -da -dum. Let me just pull so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so last time, I'm just going to jump right in at the moment just to overview where we are and where we're going, and then I'll just tell you what's up and what's happening around the studio. Um, last time we were working on this scene, we've been slowly putting it together, changing the camera move, changing the general mood and the lighting, added some uh, depth of field, some trees and things like that. Now we have to do some bushes and other stuff. So those are the, the next big steps. Um, I wanted to just really talk about what I've been working on really quickly since this is a, has become a little bit of a special project for Twitch. And uh, even though it's, it is part of my test for Return to Harry Hill, um, it, is, it is a little bit above and beyond what I'd normally do because I think it's a, it's a good demo material and for how to use After Effects and how it can be used for different, different things. Anyways, what I have been working on is the animatic for the film, which is right here. I'm not switching screens around. It seems when I, when I have two screens capturing, it um, really slows the system down, so I'm just pulling screens over. Uh, I've, I've been working on this animatic for a while now, and I've just been adding some new animation and new scenes to it um, with, the, with the new concepts that were in there, the, this whole fiery burning thing and testing shots. Anyways, this shot is really over-resolved, but it's from a long time ago. It's a look dev test that's being mixed in with a little bit of storyboarding. But I really want to talk about super quick this thing I've been working with to do these new frames, the new frames that I need to do here. And I'll just close this out since it's, I'm not going to be working on it. I've been playing with TV Paint a little bit. And in TV Paint, I'm just, I thought what I would try to do with it, because I'm so used to using Photoshop, um, I thought what I would try to do is use TV paint and try to move the camera less, be a little less detail oriented and just try to keep moving quickly. So I wanted to give it a try since I have it and I've used it on a number of projects now and I thought it might be just a good place to go to just start storyboarding a little more. And TV paint has some good features for moving the camera and doing storyboarding and you can output everything. It's got a lot of robust features as far as storyboarding is concerned. Well, I have not gone that deep into it. so. With going into the, the user guide, I will definitely get into that. It's something I need to learn. Once again, it's like one of those things where it's going to expand my knowledge and just give me a little bit of a, a better sense of how to approach projects and give me a more diverse palette of how to look at it. But there is a lot to learn. So, But it is really great at storyboards. It's got some really good organizational things and different ways to lay it out lay out the projects and the shots. So in here you can kind of create different scenes and reorganize them and do all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to do this just because I have to move into a different mode for the animatic and get out of that space of exploring and discovering design and focus more on just moving through the character movements. So with all that, um, one of the things I've been doing is I'm not the best artist. Uh, I don't have the greatest anatomical memory or anything like that. So what I have been doing is I've been using a few reference things to do my characters and to design them. And um, I just want to show you guys how that's working really quickly because there's a couple of things I discovered and I found them online. I'm sure most of you already know about this stuff and I, it's just I'm the last one to the show or to the party. I've been playing with this thing um, called Design Doll. And uh, Design Doll is essentially a posing program it's free. I'm using this free version. It's pretty. There's a lot of features that you get for free. It starts out. This is the the main character that you just get to work with right away. But it has a lot of um, a lot of different characters, and you can actually design characters. I'm just trying to see where I can't remember where all that stuff is. You can apply different materials to them as well, and they're not meant to look real. What they are meant to do is to give you like a pose doll, like just like what you would have. Right here was another one I've been using. I'm going to see if I can, you guys can see me in the frame, um, is the body coon. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it, but I've been playing with this thing. Maybe I'll try to make this screen full size. Just give me a second. 
so you can see this a little better. So these guys, I don't know if it's in focus or not. These guys are for sale online right now. They're on sale right now for $35 each. They're not very big. Uh, when I ordered it, I thought it would be a bit bigger. I got two of them. I got a male and a female because I use these kind of things a lot. And they're really helpful for posing. And these ones are more dynamic than the Art Buck models that you might use. They have a little more posability. And they have... They have a nice stand, and they also have a whole bunch of different features that come with them, sort of like these like um, extra hand parts and things like that. And I'm still I'm still cutting off all the there's little props and stuff that they come with. I was going to do I don't know if you guys are interested, but I was going to do a little unboxing of the the female model, the female the f female maquette that they they come with. But it comes with this little stand. Now it's pretty nice. It's a, it's a little it can almost feel a touch flimsy like it's going to break but so far i haven't managed to damage it and it's actually been pretty good At, like i said it's a bit smaller than i thought based on the photos on the web however i'm pretty happy with it the range of motion is really nice the amount of detail in it's really nice and i've been using it so it works pretty well so i was a little bit on this investigation process of how i could get some anatomical reference a little faster and uh and i haven't updated that i have these great statues here that I got from, uh, uh, I can't remember where these are from. These are old, these are a little bit older. These are kind of expensive though. These are like, I've shown them before. These are these large physical models and I use these for my anatomy reference. I constantly use these things when I'm drawing. I have a male and a female version. Um, they're really, I really love them. You can take the head off and stuff like that. But anyways, I won't get into those ones. These ones are a lot more, the body coons are a lot more affordable and they're more for posing. They're not so much for anatomy, um, similar to this program, but so it really depends on how you like working, whether you like to have things in your hands, cause it can be a little tricky to, to actually pose characters in this program here. If you're not used to that process, it can be a little bit tricky but I've actually found I'm doing a lot of quick work with it. And there's, the controls are pretty nice. Like the, it takes a bit of getting used to, but you can pose the character pretty fast. There's some really good foot controls. It's designed to function more like a doll, like one of the dolls I just showed you, one of the body coon dolls. Um, but this is essentially some controls here. And it's in, most of the time you can just grab on the model and pull it around the way you want it. And the, the, feet, the feet adjust automatically. I'm just putting it back a little bit because I want my pose. Um, you can also store poses. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm just, just still just learning this program. So I don't want to get too much into to how to use it yet because I'm still figuring it out, honestly. Um, but with all that being said, it's actually been, it's been really, it's a nice program. And you basically, you can adjust the hands and stuff. They have some really nice hand controls. Uh, da, da, dum, where are they? They're right here. So where is the finger controls? I know I've had them up before. I'm still learning how to use this thing. I just saw a really quick overview of it online and uh, really, really looks really promising. So I don't know. I can't remember how to get into the hand here. Anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on this since we are, oh, maybe it's this. There it is. So with each one of these hands, you can pose them manually. You can, pose, you can kind of change the spread and stuff. They're like just a basic rigged, rigged hand that you can adjust. Anyways, really helpful. I'm really, I'm really liking it. Same thing with the feet. The feet are cool because they also take care of themselves pretty automatically. Let's just zoom out a bit here. Um, like the toes, for instance, if you're pulling the foot around and you're like lifting it off, the toes will kind of con will contact the ground and give you just a nice little a little uh, contact point for the feet. So I've really been liking it. You can collect poses. Uh, you can change the model a little bit. I can't quite remember where that is. Oh, here it is. So here you can change different things just using the sliders here, changing the properties of the character's head. So I'm just making it a little less anime looking. But I wanted to keep her young, so I just I, w I was fine with the default model. Her legs are probably a bit too long for a real character, more more realistic character, but that can also be changed. So pretty cool, lots of lots of neat little features there, and really helpful. You can also change your camera. You can have a, a view to work in, and then you have your camera view over here, which you can adjust, and you can also change the perspective as you see fit. 
giving you more uh, long shots, wide shots. You can. It also has a really nice feature for perspective, so you can do forced perspective. I'll leave it to you guys to check it out, but then I'll give you a link for the two sites in the in the chat right here. But essentially, one is the Body Coon models, and they're on sale right now for forty dollars American for one, which is a pretty big discount considering. So I'll just throw that in there. Not sure if anyone's actually interested in them, but um, there you go. And then uh, the actual design doll program is right here. And you get a lot for, for nothing for free. So it's worth checking out. Just put that in there. There you go. And yeah, and here you can sort of see more of what it can do and what it's capable of and all the different stuff that you can play with. So it's it's pretty fun. You can do multi multiple figures. You can import models. You can export it if you like your pose, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty it's a pretty useful tool. Plus, you can easily... The way I've been working with it is I just have it up, up on my top screen. And I, I adjust it. I adjust my shots and my character. And then what I do is like if I have the pose that I'm looking at right now, which I had, I found it was just so much easier just to pose this thing to get this character in the right spot. It just made it just made it more made more sense to me. So um, I'll just show you really quick here. I know this is off topic, but I just wanted to show this really quick because it's what I've been doing. So for this, for instance, I want her hand up at her mouth because she's like, there's a, there's a fire, and she's like, oh man, there's a fire. So you can see this kind of posing stuff will be a lot easier once we. We have more VR sets and stuff, and we're all we're all using VR kits because it's a little hard to know <laughs> where things are supposed to be. The only thing I haven't figured out yet is how to move the camera. You know, in Maya, you press the middle mouse button and you can move the camera up and down, but I haven't figured that part out yet. So we're rotating the hand. I guess I can rotate this like that. It looks like she's picking her nose that down there I don't really care much about the hand pose more just the general the general mass of it and let's bring this in a bit more and bring this closer to her body because sometimes this stuff's a little bit tricky to figure out and so here too I think what I'll do is let's grab her torso I'll straighten her up a little bit and the nice thing is it tries to keep things aligned which is pretty sweet Things kind of hold together pretty well. Whoa. Undo button works, which is nice. I want her to tilt her head this way more. Like that. I'm sort of looking at both both things as I pose her. It's not as it's definitely not as fast as just posing it with a body coon type doll because you're literally this is a very it's like all computers. It's a super two-dimensional way to do a three-dimensional thing. Okay, and then so all I want to do is just bring this torso in a bit because I'm not really looking at her all the way. And she's very imbalanced at the moment. Like you wouldn't, no one would stand like this. So maybe we can just bring her up a little bit. Bring that hand up a bit. There may be ways to pin things. I'm not really sure if there is or not. And this hip is a little bit weirdly up. But that could be my fault. Maybe I did something weird. Anyways, I won't go spend too much time on this, but it's been a really it's been a really nice little a nice little tool just to help me get some of my, my more tricky poses down and just start thinking about the actual character's movement and structure. So it's it's a nice thing it's a nice thing to add to the pipeline and just to get the flow down. Yeah, and so anyway, so once I have that, that pose in place, then I've literally, it's been up here on my top screen, and I'm literally just referencing it. So this, she's come back a little bit, so, you know, oops, i got to undo because my pressure sensitivity is all off. And then we have this shoulder that's down like this more. So I can block in my masses easier. There we go. And then this shoulder's here. I can just see how the structures are working better and that the fact that the elbow goes down to here and then this is up here. So it could have been, and the hand is, starts here. So which would have been a pretty tricky, not tricky, but definitely a more hit and miss drawing for me can now become a little bit, I know where I'm going better. I get some of my angles properly done. 
where someone like if someone's more of a proficient drawer than me, this wouldn't be a problem. But for me, it's it's a it's not as easy. So now I can have these these two drawings and sort of start framing them out a little better. So that's basically what I've been doing. A little bit of a diversion, but I just thought I wanted I just wanted to share that guys that with you. Um it's been really helpful. Oh, and apparently I haven't saved this yet. Let's go here. Terry Hill. I've got it in T V paint here somewhere. T V paint folder. And this is going to be called well, this is supposed to be this file, so we'll just overwrite it because I haven't even done anything there yet. Okay, so that's it. So we won't do this anymore. Um, let me just check because I got a couple of comments here. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Messerelli is saying thanks for the useful software, and Monkey Painter is saying thank you. Wanted to get Body Coon for drawing refs. I think Body Coon's great. Um, I would say the real perk of it is it's just hands on. And, and, you know, you could, if you, if you were really ambitious and you wanted to do something sort of like what's with this software, the, the doll one, um, the equivalent of what you could do is you could just set up your, a webcam and put, and set your focus and put that streaming on your computer. So that's like one, one way of doing it instead of design doll or anything like this, which can, they can be a bit annoying. These, they're great because you can change the material really easy. You can do some lighting in this program as well. You can change where the light is, things like that. So that's nice for sure. But uh, it is a little bit of like you saw, a little bit of work as far as trying to get the, the pose the way you want. Actually, I don't want to close that because I want to keep that for later. Um, and you can save a whole library of poses. But with a body coon character, I don't know if you guys can see me or not. The stream keeps like... Look, I keep like going offline or something. Just let me know if there's any problems with the stream. But with one of these guys, you can you can basically just pose away, like in real time, get the pose you want, and like get that because that that pose I was just trying to do with her. This is how fast I can get it here. Just adjust the height a bit. Get the guy standing. And they've got toes on the body coon models too. Actually, I'll make this more full screen here so you can so you can see. I'll double myself up. There we go. So basically, they have some nice little toe ones. Sorry if it's not zoomed in really well. The toes are a little stiff, um, but the, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure they'll loosen up over time as you as you continue to play with them. So sometimes it requires just doing this. And I, often I usually just take this off the stand and I pose it the way I want. So I'm just posing the character. She's like, oh man, that, that house is on fire. Give me the body twist the way I want, like that, like that. Kind of bend the knees down a little bit, anchor the feet. There we go. Pretty decent pose. I get the same amount of information that I need to work with, and then I just drop them in the little arm and adjust as necessary. And the character can either just float there, or I can, you know, I can as things as I need to. But it's a little bit faster. It's, a, it's just a little faster, a little more intuitive, because obviously it's, you're using your hands. And if you really want to, you can swap hands out. So this, this process is a dash, a dash faster for you if you're, if you're more of a tactile person and you're not used to 3D. And they're nice. I mean, so far, I've, I think that the actual model is really decent and the material quality is really good. And I haven't had any breaks yet. And I've only just started using them, so I can't, I can't speak to quality long term. Um, like I said, it can feel a little bit flimsy or precarious at times. And they're small. But that just makes them portable too, right? So you, you can take them places and, you know, use them for other things. Use them on the road. You can have them in your dorm or whatever you're doing and they're not taking up a ton of space and they're easy to move. Okay, so we'll stop talking about art reference models and we can get back to actual uh, after effectsing. Um, okay, let's get going. So I think the one thing I wanted to add was I wanted to look at adding some bushes to this. And I need to think about how I'm going to do my bushes because I think traditionally I've been doing them in Photoshop with some very bush-like brushes. And I have to decide, is that how I'm doing my bushes or is there another way that I want to maybe address them? So there's a couple of ways we can do them. And they're not, they're not both the same. 
One way I've been interested in trying, which maybe we can do, I'm just going to close Bodycoon. Or sorry, this uh, design doll. I wish I knew how to save pose, library mode. Add? Oh, I can't add poses in the trial mode. Okay, well, I'm just going to be okay with losing it. Save changes, what does that even do? We'll see what happens. I'm not sure what I saved there. Okay, so let's bust open Maya for a second. And for those of you who don't have Maya, I'm sorry. I'm going to just look at Maya for one minute. Because um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out my approach for bushes and other things. And there's a lot of different ways you can go in it. And one of my approaches is using paint effects and brushes, which is sometimes super rad. So let's just, uh, I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to show you how it's like, this is something I do a lot of. Um, let's go to paint effects. If I have them here, they may not even be here anymore. Effects. No, they're not. I used to have like a little paint effects section, but I don't anymore. So I'm just going to go here and we will just add, we'll go find a brush. So we can go to the visor, I guess. Where's the visor? I can't remember. They've, a couple of things have changed. There used to be, let me just see if I can find this here. Sorry guys. There used to be, a, there was a section for a little while that was like this new create menu, I think. Um, let's just see create and it used to open the visor but that stuff's changed man where's the visor now Those general editors attribute editor channel graph no 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 not there viewport content browser that might be it now okay so maybe it's the content browser So I'm just going to go here. These are all defaults. Like I haven't done a lot with any of this stuff. Um, I'm going to find plants. Plants. There's a couple of different kinds of plants. There's non-meshed and then there's meshed. I want to look for something that might be a good bush. Mm -hmm. Just do bushes, I guess. Okay, so it should automatically turn the... the uh, Paint, paint effects on. Whoa, humongous. That is the biggest bush I've ever seen. So let me just size this brush way down. I guess there's a reason they had the brush so small. Okay, so I'm painting a bush. Doesn't look super good. Kind of just a big old mess. But let's just see something here. What I'm going to start doing is adding in properties to this bush. So I want to just play with it a second. Um, one of the things I can do right away with it, which is uh, bu -bu 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 -bum, behavior. Do these things have, I want flow animation, tubes, behavior, forces, not forces, turbulence, turbulence type. Tree wind. Let's have a look at what the tree wind does. My curiosity is if it actually even runs, because it may not on a mesh like this. Doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it's just making an old, a big old giant mess. So I think I might use a different kind of, I've never used this bush before. I'm sorry for the confusion. So let's go back to paint effects tool. Okay, so it's under generate now. There used to be, well then we, I guess we just have to go back to that window again. Sorry guys, I, I'm not really, I haven't used this in this new version and a few things have changed. Content browser, let's look for a better, we'll just do plants or trees. The trees sometimes work a little bit better Let's do birch blowing light. Okay. 
And we'll just draw this in. We have all these little trees now. But these ones are very, very small. Okay, well, the brush profile doesn't matter. We just, I want the scale of the creation. Length, man. Maybe we'll just change the global scale then, I guess, to 10. Okay, so what should happen here is the bushes will blow, which they don't seem to, oh, they are doing it a little bit. It's really slow. But so, basically, I don't know if this is going to be worth going into for this project because it's all, it's kind of running slow and it's a little bit messy and I clearly don't have my head around the best way to do it. You can use these as masks. So I'll show you one that I've made before. We usually tweak the values and stuff like that. And you can use them as masks to create moving bush, bushes and stuff like that. Uh, it, it does, the, the last, that last one did look like a giant lettuce. Um, these are a bit better. They render nicer. I mean, I'm not sure if this will render very nice because we're not using, we're using the Arnold renderer. And really to do it, you need Maya software to render paint effects. And it's not even working. Well, there it is. Resolution is not very high on it. I have it set pretty low. But that's what you get for for nothing. And then you can just like tweak and adjust it a whole bunch till you get something that you're happier with. One of the big things, the bad things that happened in the stroke was the pressure mapping. So if I go back to that tool and I just push really hard, that'll give me these these guys here. And then I can just bring the global scale up to 10. Actually, let's put it to four and we'll just increase the length. Eight. Length minimum. One. Two. And we need to change the tube thickness. Anyways, you can adjust all these properties and try to kind of change them. It takes a bit of time, but once you get something that you really like, um, you can render them. They render super fast. This is still using a and then you can render them moving and stuff like that. And then basically you can use them as, as alpha brushes. So you looks like you have these trees moving right here, right? This renders really fast. This one renders better because I've, I have barely any leaves on it. But I can use these for creating shadow um, gobos too in After Effects. Excuse me. So maybe let's just do one really quick since we're here. So this creates a really subtly moving mess of branches but i'll just adjust a couple of these settings um tubes per step let's put to 0 0.05 and see if that helps us out a bit 0.1 okay i like that a bit better let's also do this um so we have under growth there's a whole bunch of things branches twigs leaves so we can adjust how the branches work and start branches i think changes when the branches actually start up the body of the of the tree so we just start really low. Number of branches, we can increase or decrease. Two, that's way too many, clearly. I don't think you can do increments, though. No, it has to be one or two. So there's other things you have to change in order to make it less insane. Um, split depth is like, when does when do they start branching off? Uh, branch dropout, that's just like, uh, it makes it then look a little more natural. You'll have some branches and some just disappear. Um, split twist is like how it goes up the spine. So you can see I'm rotating them around and that's when the little splits happen. Um, there's a middle branch in here and that seems to be doing a lot of the work here. Twigs. These twigs here are the little guys that are kind of poking off the sides here. And this is, we're going to, we have lots in the, uh, lots in the cluster. We might want to increase their length a little bit. They seem a little twig, 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 twiggy. And the base width, and the, you can adjust the profile too. So this is a twig length scale. So that means like as you go up the branch, they can get smaller. And as you're lower down on the branch, they're bigger. Which is, tends to be the case in trees, but not always. We just do that. Actually, it doesn't always tend to be, but yeah, you know, anyways. And then 
there's a few things happening here. There's like squirreliness all in there. I'm not even really sure what's going on there. Really, the, this stuff you can spend a lot of time in. Um, here's the leaves and clusters. This is the number of uh, the number of leaves in a little a little grouping of leaves. So we'll leave it at we'll leave it at two for now. There's number of leaf clusters is four. So the more of these, the more leaves will be up a branch or up a twig. Okay. Uh, leaf dropout is sort of how often you don't have one. Leaf length. We need to increase this quite a bit because they're quite small. Whoa, that's huge. Leaf tip width. So we can just adjust this as we want to. What you really can do is you can change the leaf width scale here. So this is the bottom. I believe this is the bottom of the leaf. And then you can go and kind of scale it the way you want to. So if I want the leaf to have like a nice tiny little tip and get big in the middle. This is not more robust than let's say like frog tree or one of those other programs, but it definitely, it's a great, I really like it because it's a really pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use thing that just comes with Maya and I use Maya. So it, it works for me. But there are alternatives. Okay, so I've got these little leaves. Um, and because I'm not using these to look like realistic trees, and I never have been, this has always been more than enough for me. Uh, dun -dun -dun. Leaves start, essentially, when do they start appearing? So do they appear, do they start way low down the tree, or do they have to, do they have to be further up the tree? And I would prefer them to be a little further up. Leaf twist, this is all fine. Leaf curl, you can change how much they sort of fold on themselves, which is nice. So up at the tip, let's say they're really curled and more near the base, they're, they're just a little flatter. Cool, so now we've turned these into more like long leaves, which isn't quite what a birch tree is. Birch tree leaves are pretty flat. They're like little flat circles more than anything. Just giving a little curl just to give you an example. Okay, so now, the only thing I don't, there's some crazy stuff happening here, and this has to do with pressure mappings, which I think happens here. And what we might want to do is just turn it off because that's affecting the transparency of the leaves and the scale. So if we have turned it off, the scale will remain the same. It also looks like it's really dramatically affecting the count of the leaves or something. What is this? Okay, that's your basic like pressure points. You can change those to change because it looks like I had low, or high pressure and low pressure. Um, there's something that's affecting the count of the leaves. You can also manually adjust the pressure scale here. So if you do have values, like let's say pressure map one is scale. We can adjust this and have the trees in the middle of the stroke be bigger. And then at the end, they start to get smaller again which can be really handy if you're doing grasses and stuff and you're trying to create a grass map that like is a little hillock or, or a tiny little hill and you want the grasses to sort of uh, rise up and fall down. You can do that really easily there. Uh, I think the thing that's happened here is I probably have in the birch, there's like uh, up here maybe. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There's something that probably says like uh, how it's affecting, how pressure affects things. So if we go down, there might be just a pressure section I can't recall. Length mapping, no, 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 no. Gaps flow, no. I'm pretty sure there's something that says, let's just check in the leaves really quick. On all leaf foot scale, no, leaf curl, we did that. We can change our colors, obviously, and the leaf segments. So if we, sorry, I'm jumping around. I'm just trying to find actually why these clumps of insanity are happening right here. If you look at these things, they're just a giant mess. And why they're just why they're happening there and nowhere else is a little bit of a mystery. Um, these are your leaf variables. You can change as much as you like. They're pretty there's some really nice things. They're handy. You can change the color, obviously. I don't care about the color because we're going to be using it as an alpha channel. Um, I'm just looking for the thing that would say what is and what is not affected by pressure. Now these, you can turn them on or off and they will add like this as adding these flowers to it. And then you can change the properties of flowers or buds, which are little knobs at the end of things. 
So that makes your end of your branches. They don't just look like a terminating stick. They have like a little bud on the end, and so you can change the property there. Uh, <laughs> what is the width scale? So I can also do this. This brings the width down as it goes up the tree, which is a little more realistic, a little more elegant. Um, there should be something that says something about pressures, but I could be wrong. Channels. Well, that's just how it's rendered. Brush type paint. Smear blur. No, don't want to do that. Not really sure. I'm not sure why we got this crazy, these mush pits over here that just flew off the side. We might just have to change some of the variables. You can also change the, um, well, the randomness. That'll do that for sure. That'll kind of screw things up and kind of, but maybe we need to increase the start height. No, that's just making a mess. Don't do that. Number of segments. That's doing all kinds of stuff. This is how many uh, divisions go up the body of the of the trunk, essentially, or of the main part of the tree. So as you increase those divisions, it has a little more flexibility. It can do more stuff. Um, let's just see the growth. I think what we have is we, what happens if we turn off branches? Okay, those branches are the offenders. We have one, it could be the split depth. Do, 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 do. When do we want them to start? And it's because of the length mapping too, it looks like, because these are short things and it's still adding them to the to the brush, even though they're short. So we probably need to get rid of that end thing. But I do want a bit of density in this bush. So let's have a look. Cool. Now, this looks like garbage. So let's go back here. And this whole pressure scale thing, Bring this one up. I just hate that thing. It looks awful. We'll bring it down here. Let me bring this one down there. Bring this end one down a bit. Okay. It's not an exact science, unfortunately. <laughs> you kind of got to just figure it out. And then there is a random seed value, so which is somewhere. Where is that? I can't remember where all this stuff is. I'm, and stamp density, that's that's how many, um, should be how many times the trees appear on the thing, but where is the, let's just check mesh, tubes per section. I don't think we even have mesh on here, so it shouldn't matter. It's not a meshed thing. Shading, you can actually change the way the lighting looks. You can add texture to these things, which can be really nice. Shadow effects, which are great. Sometimes you can create shadows with lights, and they actually are really nice shadows. Um, tubes, no, no. Dun, 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 dun. There is something that changes the random seed of it. It might be here. There it is. Um, display quality in 3D, a smooth shading seed. You can change the five. You just can keep changing this until you get something you like better. So now we have kind of this, this mess of tree, which it's a little bit, uh, it's slopey over a little bit. So there are some things. I could just work on this for quite a long time and get lost in these details. This, so there's one section here, which is also happens a lot, is behavior and forces, um, path follow and path attract. So this will make it so it, it, everything leans towards the direction of the path that you drew it. And this will pull the branches down or up. And we can, we can change and modify gravity. I think these brushes are actually really powerful because they will very easily interact with things. And they can be a bit glitchy, but for, for the type of animation that I do and the way that I work, it actually tends to be more than enough. Um, da, da, dum, bum, bum. Let's just see. I, I kind of want to reduce... Maybe it's the curve attraction that's not, not... Could be the azimuth and stuff like that. or I don't know how to say that exactly. Right now I have deflection enabled, so that's when things hit the ground. If you turn deflection off, they'll just go through. Which technically I don't really need them to be hit, turning off the ground because we're trying to create just a, a branch silhouette that we can use to make shadows and stuff with. But it doesn't really matter. What I really need to do is get, I need to get these things a little bit more, a little bit straighter. So that would be up here somewhere. 
elevation. So straight up. Let's see, elevation minimum would be straight up. So elevation max, let's just put them straight. Azimuth. That changes sort of that angle. This I never 100% understand, but I think it's the way that things are leaning. It doesn't always do what I expect. Does the sun direction matter? I don't know. And do we have gravity? Because there is gravity too. Forces, we do have gravity. So you can increase gravity like crazy or decrease it. So there is no gravity. If we have some gravity, the bushes will, even the, even the way they bounce, will tend to be a little bit more weighted. So right now you can see there's some movement happening in the animation. A little bit of wiggling in the leaves, a little slight breezy movement. This, this just does worlds of, uh, adds just tons of detail to something. I might actually do this. I'm going to increase the length of the branches. Where's the length? Minimum size. Not that. Let's do something else altogether. Oh, that's like minimum size before they get cut out. Interesting. Okay, this is fine the way it is. I just want to get, let's get the main tubes a little bit longer because I want to get the branches off the ground so I can isolate them a little bit more. So we want to get the height up even more. 20. I kind of find it annoying how the branches are directly affected by this, but... Okay, now my branches are way too long. The twigs are fine, it's just the branches. The branches are too long. Minimum size is zero, but there should be something about split size decay. That's not doing anything. It's not helpful. Split twist. It's a little bit helpful. That gets them off all gets them all off the ground at least. Why is there not a thing that lets me say how long I want my branches? Because these are super long branches. I don't really want them this long. middle branch is offensive it's sort of it's doing all the work but I'm not sure where its length is coming from interesting I'm just increasing the base root of the trunk I definitely am not finding this specifically intuitive. I really find these branches, these middle branches are just doing weirdness that's annoying me a little bit. I might actually pull the middle branch out, which makes everything look terrible. But I'm just going to increase my branches. Start branches at zero, I guess. Um, make these trees even longer okay it's too many tubes let's do put it back to what it was point one length minimum 20 10 25 30 they're just getting skinnier and skinnier and the branches are getting longer and longer. It's kind of annoying. Okay, 
now I'm going to change the elevation. That's fine. Elevation max is this, elevation min is this, azimuth. The stuff's not gonna fix anything. And we need to get into these branches and why are they acting so weird? I don't know. I kind of just, the angle is a problem. So let's, there we go, that's better. Okay. They're pretty long and droopy. Okay. Number of branches, we might increase that. Let's put it to three for now. So why in the world can I not change the length of my branches? This is super weird. I bet if I had the middle branch now, they'll just be insane. Yeah, okay. We just need to change the depth of the splitting. I feel like the longer they split down, the more, the longer the branches are getting. We clearly have too much gravity or something. Or maybe the path attract is a problem. Let's see. Yeah. So we could put the path attract to, I guess, zero. And you let gravity be more the determining factor. Okay, so we're starting to get better. I know this is taking a long time. It'll be worth it. Okay, that's a bit better. Twigs and clusters, twig, 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 start angle. We'll have them start more like that, more vertical. As you can see they're getting bigger at the, they're angling out at the base and then as they get further up, they're getting more spread out. Twig stiffness, we can increase the stiffness. So that's, is there a branch after twigs? We're not doing that. Um, dun, 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 twig length. It's gonna be pretty complicated in there. Let's reduce the number of twigs. And let's also reduce the angle at the end when they're like that. Uh, twig dropout might add a higher dropout rate. Twig base width, a little fatter. Tip width, keep it nice and small. When do the twigs start? They start further up the tree or closer in, we'll do further up. Starting to get something interesting. It doesn't look like a birch at all. Um, I'm having trouble, like, definitely with the branches. I feel like they're, I don't know, they're just not working very well. The tree feels like a little bit palm tree-ish or something because it's so organized. Anyways, not sure. And anyways, I guess it's just sort of we're oh, we're taking a look at how this thing works. I'm sorry if it's not. We're not really. I was hoping just to you know this is a this is, should just be a quick overview, and then I just went and got us all here, which is a little bit annoying. Let's see if we can reduce this. the The goal is to get like a a nice branch shadow that we can then cast on things. And once you've got this process down, you can make so many variations of something and it's it's actually really, really powerful. And right now our leaves are definitely really small. Um, ba -bum, one. Okay. 
There we go. Now we have leaves. Okay. Leaf width scale is fine. We'll do the leaf start closer to the end for sure. Angles are okay. We did all this stuff already. So it's a little better. I'm not, I'm still not a fan of like the way the twigs are branching and I wish I had, I don't understand why. I mean, I just have to get my head back around branches a little bit because right now they're, they're kind of these weird, unpredictable things to me. They don't feel really super intuitive at the moment, but anyways, I'm just getting weird combinations. I'm starting to get a bush. Anyways, you can all you can also save these presets once you get them. So I suppose this is putting pushing the split more to the top, and this puts the split more to the bottom, which might be good. We probably want to increase the angle of the split here. That helps us get away from that really straight up bushy looking thing. So that's a little more branchy feeling. We also have displacement which we can do which is sort of the behavior or this which you can add noise to it so that adds a little bit more variation in the branch there we go and we still it'll still animate so we can see that we can just animate it there And we can increase this. I should probably save this really quick. So this is under Harry Hill. I've got scenes. I'm going to do a folder for um, effects really quick, wherever that went to. There it is. And then I'll just put in new folder, trees. And you know I'll do another one that's grass. PFX or paint effects tree bush okay okay um da -dum. so the forest is there was one thing i just wanted to do really quick is a turbulence we have grass wind i want to do tree wind because what tree wind does is you'll get more you should get more movement on the leaves let's just see if we can get it to be a little more leafy feeling Point one. Definitely stuff you have to play with. So we've increased the, the turbulence amount. So that means the speed has to come down because it's just looking a little too sketchy. Might have to decrease the, try and throwing the frequency. It's, the frequency could just be too high. Yeah, it's starting to look stop motion-y, which is, could, could be cool. Put the frequency to 0.5. Cool. Okay, and let's just do, I want to, let's put the frequency to 0.2. I just want to see what that does. I'm going to check my leaf stiffness because my leaf stiffness could be really high, which might be making, meaning why they're not moving at all. Yeah, so now they're moving a little more. They're not doing the chattery thing, which I kind of want more of. It feels a little better. So we're getting little bits of movement on the leaves, which is nice. If I want to, if I want to, I think if I want to increase more of that, I have to increase the frequency. I'm just going to try something crazy. I just want to see what happens if I really, okay, interesting. So we definitely get more leaf movement. Um, I wonder if I change the, I have the frequency up and I just change the speed to 0 0.05. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the frequency is still really high. Let's try 0 0.01. 
Okay, so we've got some nice leaf chattering, but it's still a little bit manically crazy. It's a little better. Put the frequency to three. I'm just trying to get some nice little leaf movements mixed with bigger movements. It's going to take some refining, though, I tell you. It's a little better. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Turbulent speed. Let's put it to point zero zero five. What I would like, though, is I would like to get more of the actual tree moving, but that might not be possible and still have a high frequency. I now feel like my tree is a little too mushy. So let's, um, I guess it's too like, like all mangled. So displacement, let's put this, um, frequency down. Let's put this zero. That's zero and that's sum. Some of these branches are moving, these tree pieces are moving way too much. There are definitely better tree simulators. Like if you were to go in to get frog tree or something from like the, from view or something, you'd have like better, better renders and stuff. Probably, probably faster too. Mm, however, um, this is what I have at the moment. So. I know I'm going to lose some of my nice leaf chatter, which sucks. This will probably be chaos. Lots of leaf chatter. Even changed the whole shape of the tree, which is interesting. Weird. Tree's just freaking out. So the frequency, let's bring it to point two. I don't know why it's, it changes the whole shape of the tree. That's weird. We could just try grass wind. Let's see what that does. That seems to do more movement on the leaves. So grassman definitely seems to affect the the leaves a little better. I'm seeing so little. It's wild to me how much it's changing the um, structure of the tree, which is interesting. So weird. Why would that even happen? It's like it's linked with something. Still trying to figure this out. I've been using this for years, and it's funny how it's... Still don't have it 100% down. This must be incredibly tiresome to watch. I'm sorry, guys. 
So we have some leaf movement, some not happening at all, which is fine. It's fairly normal in trees. We have some good stuff happening. Cool. I might do... Okay, great. I think it's getting better. I'm just going to shorten some of these a little bit. The two length max to 20. So we get more of a bush feeling. I can throw it up real easy if I need to get more. Okay. I think I'm just going to go with this. Even though there's nothing happening over here in this back corner, there's barely anything doing anything. Grr. I'm annoying. Okay, now we have a little bit. I'm going to swap it to Grasswind just for a sec to see if that... Whoa! The whole thing is flying everywhere. But unfortunately, it's mostly just the leaves. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do Tree Wind. And I think I'm not going to get much better than what I'm getting at the moment. Maybe we'll crank it up a little bit and pick a better angle. Obviously, we don't have to want the whole thing just flying off the hook, but. When we drop the frame rate of this thing, it should look better. I might just increase the speed. Let's see if we increase the speed to 0.1, which is a lot. It's going to be flying all over the place. There we go. Now what I need to do is reduce the amount, 0.3. Pretty windy, point four. I think that's pretty good, sweet. Okay, now let me show you how to render this. For all this time, we'll render it. Uh, let's just get our settings. We want it pretty big because it is a, um, it's going to be used as a, as a template or a piece in a lot of things. So I would do a minimum of 2K. Sometimes I would do 4K even. Let's set up our little render thing here. I'm probably, I'm just going to use the perspective camera. I don't always do that, but I'm, I'm being a bit, li nah, you know what? <laughs> Everything is telling me in my body, don't just use the perspective camera. You always regret it. I'm just going to make a camera here. There we go. Let's just get a nice bush shape, tree shape. I want one a little, I don't mind a little lopsided. I don't want it so perfectly symmetrical. So the other thing, if I really want to flatten it out, I can just lengthen the angle of the lens. That looks pretty good. So also I'm going to do a minimum of, what do we want a minimum of a 20 second cycle? Mm, something that we can loop a little bit. Let me see. I think there might be a way. I'm just going to double check. I, there might be a way to make the uh, turbulence loop. So we go into tubes behavior, turbulence. Is there a way to make it loop? Not sure if there is actually. No, flow animation is just how things, like if you were to draw the tube, which is cool. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Is there anything in extras? Certainly not. Nope. Nope. All right, let's just, we'll just leave it. So what I'm going to render out is I'm going to render out a 
about five, 400 frames. They won't be that big. Try to fill the camera as much as space as well as we can. And then make sure you go through it so it doesn't pop out of the frame. Cool. I'm saving. There's some kind of crazy moves in there, but they're probably not going to show up. They don't look super organic. These are like windy, twisty things. I'm not, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of their wind. I mean, obviously I messed it up a little bit, but I feel like it's a little bit, it's not supernatural. It's, it's like, look what's happening down this bottom branch. It's just like squirreling out all like whirling around. We're getting these weird little like clinks happening in it, which is super weird. Thankfully, I'm just using this top section. Probably it'd be interesting to look at a different program for doing trees because I could just paint like a ton of these things really fast. This, this has its problems. Like why would a tree be like torquing in the middle like that? That's super weird. What happens if I just put displacement to zero? Maybe that's the problem. Nope, we're still getting weird crawling in the core of the trunk. Like, why would that even happen? It wouldn't curl. That could be it. Although curl is important to make it not look like a stick, like just a fake tree. It definitely is causing a, was causing a problem. So I got rid of curl. That's fixed a few of the problems. The tree is not as interesting. But it's not as like, it's not doing that weird deformy thing. Interesting. What happens if we use noise instead of curl? It'll probably do the same weird deformy thing. Yeah, it does. It's kind of, it's, it's almost like the displacement is tied to the animation somehow. So it's like, it's like a three dimensional displacement based on a moving map, which is not very useful. It's better just to have straightish trees then. That looks better. The branches are really straight and boring, but it's it doesn't move so weird. Okay. Where's my mouse? There we go. Okay, let's just go bum bum bum. So we have that. That took forever. Um I'm going to do one thing. I just want to double check and see if I can get any kind of twisting. Probably not. That's probably meant to be taken care of in the engine. It is paint effects. It's super limited in what it can actually do, but you can get some really nice results pretty relatively quickly. But although I'd have to say, if you have a little bit of money to spend, something like Tree Frog or some of the view tools for vegetation would probably be better. We should take a look at those sometime. Anyways, what I normally do is I'll just set a render range. Camera, 24, we'll just do a 2048 for now. You can do like a PNG if you want. So they don't need to be like really high quality. And then we'll do uh, name, number, and extension. Frame padding, that's fine. We'll just call this tree branch. Um, what tree branch what? I don't know. Tree branch. Windy. Call it a birch, although there's nothing birch like about it, really. I'll just call it straight since we got rid of all the nice curly stuff. 
and then the end frame, what do we do? Like, if we're at 24 frames per second, 10 seconds would be 240 frames, so 20 seconds would be 480. Just do 480. That's a lot, but we have room for it. Okay, so let me close. Oh, actually, I might even call it 2K. And save. It should render pretty fast. Let's just double check. We're using Maya software, and I can just set the... Set it to high quality. I don't think it needs to be that high. Um, it should render really fast. I mean, let's just check my um, rendering. We go to render. Let's just check our test resolution. I want to put it down to half so it doesn't take forever to render this frame. So it's doing all this, this stuff here, which that's a long render for just a paint effect. The thing I want to just double check is does the quality of the paint effect change a lot if we do it this way? So you can see here, there it is. Let's put it one to one. Oh, it's already full, I guess. Come on, down you get. It's because we're on a 4K monitor, so it's sort of, there we go. Okay, so what I might do is I will, I don't know if, the actual quality changes the size. So let's just do preview quality and see if that changes the look, okay? So we'll photograph this. And then, oh, that's not helpful. It just photographed a wireframe. So now we're doing preview quality. That rendered way faster. And what do you know? It still pretty much looks the same. Okay. The only thing I might want to do is increase the steps. Tubes per, not tubes per steps, because that's the number of trees. But in the stroke, display quality, 100. Sample density, let's do two. No, that's not what I want. Because that's kind of like tubes per step. This has actually irritated me a little bit, to be honest. Smoothing, one, what does that do? Motion blurred, primary visible surface offset, draw order, seed five. It has like a little bit of a spaciness to it that I'm not into. Lots of segments. Not surface snap. All right, well, let's just see what happens. So let's just save and we shall render. Batch render. Should go pretty fast. Well, that was a long, long haul for not a lot. I guess it's something I wanted to show anyways. It's how I create a lot of the bushes and the um, shadows and stuff like that. This will render pretty fast. Like it just bops through these things because paint effects render almost instantaneously. I guess what I'd like to do since we're here is I want to look at a different option for that. So um, I know there's tree frog for sure. Do, 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 do. Tree frog. Where is it? Oh, I guess that's a that's a hard thing about tree frog. Uh, 3D. See if that comes up. No, <laughs> X frog. That's what it's not. It's not tree frog. Why do they call it X frog? So S frog does. Um, it's part. I think it's part of. It does a lot of plants and it does a lot of simulation stuff. So. Let's just see. A lot of it's designed for realism. But I have used it before and it's pretty nice. Um, I mean, I've tested it. I never, I never really bought it. Um, so Maya 2017, I'm just wondering what is their, let's see, let's just take a look at their workflow if we can find it. It allows you to create and animate 3D trees, flowers, nature-based special effects, or architectural forms. SFrog is available in Mac OS, Windows, Linux, plugin for Maya. So we have a 30-day trial. There's a plant finder. Oh, it looks like they work for Vue as well, if you're into Vue. Um, what are XFrog plants? So I guess you buy them. 
I wonder if you can create your own. Because the other one that's really good for stuff like that is Vue. Um, I can't quite remember. Eon Software. There we go. Let's check this out. I'm just curious. I'm looking now. I know this stream is a bit of a write-off. I'm sorry about that. I'm just trying to... Um, they have the plant factory. The plant factory is pretty sweet. Let's just play this little clip. I've played with Vue a bit. It's actually pretty nice. I think they might have used it in Avatar or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't actually know for sure. It's a pretty nice way to build plants. Hmm. I definitely want to look at this one. This is super rad. I'm not sure how much it is. And do you need to buy Vue if you want to use Plant Factory? Create any kind of engine from single grass to elaborate hero trees. Create your vegetation by painting it, assembling a building blocks. Generate procedural geometry and materials unlimited detail. Animate all your plant aspects using precise breeze algorithms, which is better than what we were getting, I, th I bet. Plant Factory Designer. Easily produce high-quality photorealistic 3D plants. Hand draw from each scratch. Blah, blah, blah. Export as static 3D meshes for use in other application. Or load plants directly into view and carbon scatter. So that is Plant Factory for the artist. Let's see. Because we are designed for view 2014 studio or complete users get special version of Plant Factory simply with the product and represents the perfect combination of functionality and pricing. Plant Factory exporter. So you buy that. That's get exact extract seeds from Plant Factory to generate variations. See, I don't want static meshes because static meshes don't do me a lot of good because I can't simulate them. It gets expensive. This is why I didn't do it. I, I think I've did this before. This, to want, if you want to do wind and stuff like that, you got to go for this one, which is a thousand bucks. Yeah, so this one would be sweet, but it's a thousand dollars American. And like, well, I'm using them for, for mats, essentially. So it's going to be more because I'm Canadian. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit of money. Just for making mats and masks and stuff, even though, I mean, I do a lot of them. I suppose if, if I, the only way I could really totally justify this thing is if I, if I was going to make a ton of them and then export them and sell them or something, then maybe I could do it. But to just use it for, like, plant effects on shadows and masks and mats for After Effects, I don't, I don't know. That's a lot of money. I could probably just buy a whole bunch of trees. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it is expensive. Uh, XFrog is way more affordable. I'm just not sure if... Uh, I'm not really sure how great it is. I would look at it for sure. Um, I guess I could try a trial or something like that. Um, XFrog for Maya. And give it a shot. I feel like X Rogs probably if you can animate the plants because it's again it's not a lot of good to me if I can't animate them with naturalistic feeling winds and things like that. I know I've tried it once before, but actually, you know what we could do is just check check the manual. Mm -hmm. Visibility X Frog Five and Paint Effects Modeling X Frog Tools inside Maya.
These are changes, animation changes. What are some of the animations? A lot of changes have occurred in the way that you can create your animations. Now you can use the elaborate animation tools that come with Maya to animate your XFrog models. Every parameter can be modeled and animated independently. And what are those parameter parameters? So I guess you could have like really crazy dynamics happening on this, on, on the tree growth, but I'm just wondering, is there a basic? Just flipping through this thing. I'm not sure, honestly, I don't know how good these things would look without a ton of work. It looks neat. Like it looks like you could do a lot of really neat stuff with it. But it's good because I'm starting to see, I don't think they happen super automatically. Hmm. Hmm. Let's check manual two. Yikes. This looks so manual. It's insane. I'm sure you can preload stuff, but holy moly. This is what it takes to build a tree? I have, I mean, I've, I've, I installed the XROG trial before. This looks like some pretty old documentation. It looks like they're using like an old version of Maya even. Ugh. This doesn't look super fun to me. Maya 6. Oh my god. I'm not even sure if this is like... This manual was published January 17, 2017 for reals? Hmm... Nothing against XFrog at all. I'm sure what they're doing is amazing, but it's like, whoa, man. That looks so intense to build a plant out of. I'm sure the demo reel looks amazing, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure what kind of geniuses put it together. Let's see. Nothing there. Where is all this stuff? I want to understand. I just want to know how it works. I want to see somebody work. I guess I could look on YouTube and actually find a tutorial. Tree growth, tree seasons, blossoming flowers, complex nature based effects, abstracts, and many other uses. And that is because they are procedural objects. Procedural objects can be a little bit of a nightmare to make look like something natural. So they made the FedEx forest using tree frog. Let's see if we can see any problems. I mean, it's quite pretty. I don't like those big trees in the background. They're fairly repetitive. It's a nice render quality on this. I don't know. I don't know. Not really super into it. Hmm. I think I'm going to scratch tree frog or X frog off my list. Ugh, I don't know. I think that, ugh, man. I'm not sure. There's not really a lot of easy solutions. I mean, maybe somebody else has an easy solution. And I'm sorry if I can't see anybody on the chat today because for some reason, Twitch is not loading. Keeps coming up and falling off for some reason. I'm not sure if I'm doing something or if it is something else going on. My dashboard keeps shutting down. And I have, it all, it just says offline everywhere. So maybe I'm not even streaming. I don't really know. Yeah, it says I'm live. I mean, I can't tell. I have no I have no way everything says offline and uh anyways. So, I mean, it's not the best stream in the world, so hopefully 
I will be able to show this thing later and kind of just check it out and we'll be able to see how I actually used it in the animation. So let's go, I'm just gonna save this and we can go back to the composition which we haven't even looked at once. I was gonna add some bushes. Let's do the Photoshop stuff really quick while we have time. about half hour. Oh, I look like I'm finally getting some streaming coming in. Oh, I can finally see you guys. Well, welcome. <laughs> it says nobody's even here, so... Um, I can't, I'm, I'm seeing comments for a moment, but we'll see if they stay around. Uh, see if you guys stay around, but geez, sorry. That was like, this is kind of the worst stream ever. I'm, I've, I've like drifted into this whole weird space of trying to make tree shadows and things. And it turned into a really unsatisfying experience. Um, I'm just going to make some bushes, like just really quick bushes stuff. Um, just to show you. I didn't see that make me sense. No, I didn't see you guys mention Speed Tree. Maybe we should take a look at Speed Tree. Because so far, we're looking at very expensive programs, which, like, it's not a thousand dollars is that much money in a studio, but for what we would be doing, it's awfully a lot. And then Tree Frog or X Frog seems like a lot of work, unfortunately. Speed tree. So it looks like they're using them largely in games. Um, let's see what it looks like to s try evaluate speed tree for Cinema Studio or Architect. What is Cinema Studio? Oh, I see. Cinema for film studios or architects. Let's take a look. Cinema 7, Studio 7. What is the difference? Is Studio a program, I'm wondering? Do you know Colin Harvey? Do you like the Blender tree generator? Is it good? I mean, I'm, I haven't even tried Blender really yet, so I'm I'm kind of... I'm getting closer and closer to just doing it. Okay, so you can buy trees. I wonder if you can, I'd like to see the, someone make a tree, which we'll do. I mean, it looks decent. They're probably really low red, like, low resin manage manageable for speed tree. Let's just try cinema. Let's see what cinema even means. I'm not even sure like what program as seen in films, just Star Wars, Forrest Boom, Jurassic and the Avatar. The application is intended for films, film productions, photorealistic trees. Do not use in real time. That makes sense. Oh, uh, this is your classic going over tree simulator software. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, as they are, these ones happen all the time, right? I didn't even mean to get in here. I was just trying to demo something, and now we're just in this mess. I don't even know how to escape what we've started. Procedural modeling, model by hand drawing, create procedurally generated subdivision surface models that are ideal for hero tree pipelines, simulate animated growth of trees and plants, artist directed season changes, which is nice, import growth, custom tree meshes, blah, 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 FBX processor scripts for multiple 3D packages, quad geometry output, which is nice, so it's not triangulated. Where is the Speed Tree Studio? That must be, doesn't even say, let's find out how much it is. Ooh, <laughs> $5,000. I can understand, though, on movies like uh, Rogue One and everything else. It's definitely a top-notch program. 
Studio does what? Let's take a look at Studio really quick. And then, then I'm stopping this. I swear I'm going to stop after this. Same software used in Star Wars, Force Awakens, and Jurassic Park. So this is also used in this? So procedure and model, model by hand, create precision generated, subdivision, import growth, export meshes, export wind effects and via point cache with real time preview. That's pretty good. So we're getting the trees. Basically we're getting everything we need for roughly a thousand dollars for like visual effects. I want to see this blender tree thing. Look, we're not we're not getting out of this tree sim day. We just we're stuck in tree, tree sim day for the whole day. This is how work never gets done. Whoa, that looks pretty decent. Those leaves are moving nice. Like Maya paint effects do not move leaves that nice in any way. How did they make it? You know what we could do? We could just have a stream where we watch everyone else's tutorials in our own stream. <laughs> that I did. Mig Mix and I did use that same technique. I, it's the very same technique. It's the very same technique I was using. Now, what is this? I wonder if just eventually I'm going to quit using Maya altogether. So there's an add-on here. It adds up to parametric tree. This method is presented as a stream creation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so far so good. That doesn't look horrible. The random seed, the ratio looks nice. Geometry, branch splitting, branch growth. I like the interface of this better than the paint effects thing. Wow, that looks pretty decent right off the bat. Hmm. This is very promising. Now, what it's using its little cards, but what are they using for texturing those cards, I wonder? Oh man, another program I gotta learn. So they downloaded these little leaves, stuck them on the card, did a quick render, looking pretty rad. It looks pretty sweet considering like how that's pretty fast, maybe like 22 minutes. Man, I don't know. This looks pretty rad. Hmm. I think I'm going to just have to download Blender and start learning it. I really feel like this guy's brilliant. This guy's, I'm always learning stuff from this guy. I was looking at all his kinds of things. Realistic grass and blenders. Let's see what realistic grass and blenders looks like. See, that's the things I use the most in a lot of animation is, um, yeah, it does. It looks like they're getting some decent rendering on those leaves and stuff. Um, that's the thing I mainly use a lot of stuff for is grass and trees. I've been using it ever since the paint effects and stuff, the way for grass and trees and stuff. I've been using it like that for since 2006. And honestly, it hasn't evolved a lot since then. I'm just scrubbing through this. Okay. I don't understand what's happening here. It looks like a photo mapping. It doesn't look horrible. Does he show us what it looks like if it's moving? Probably not. It doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't look horrible, right? Like for animation, it looks pretty good. Oh man, Colin Harvey, you have presented some very challenging things to consider down the road here. Okay. I spent so much time on this. I'm super sorry. I don't even know why you guys watch this. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. There's other ways to achieve like movie leafy things, which we've done before. But I, all I wanted to do, <laughs> uh, all I wanted to do was get some, 
get some leafy stuff happening. Looks like the render finished. Great. So now we can bring it in. Wonderful. Um, we'll have a look at it. So I'll just import it as it is right now. And usually what I'll, I, I do move the image sequence out somewhere because I don't want it sitting on this drive like this. So I have a stock footage drive. Actually, let's just do that right now. It's important to show organization, isn't it? Okay. Um, we're just going to go into this project and we'll go. So I'm going to have a, I have a stock assets folder and then I have stock footage effects and then I have, um, grass plants and paint effects. And that's where this is, this this shall go. I'm having trouble getting that folder for some fancy reason. Okay, there it is. Um, so now we'll go here, and we'll go to the project folder. Harry Hill. Mm -mm -mm. Maya, it'll be under uh, assets and under images. Should just be in this root folder. It's, oh no, I got the wrong folder. It should be just a giant mess in this folder, like a whole bunch of pictures. There we go. It's not, it's not a blender tree. That's for sure. It's not an X, X frog tree, but X frog looks like a nightmare to make something cool out of. Although to be fair, we were looking at the procedural X frog plugin for Maya, which would be super dope if you were doing like alien trees and stuff like that. So I'm going to create a folder here. Tree branch, windy, straight. 2K. Usually I make them 4K. That's why I'm just giving it that 2K. I just wanted it to render fast. So I'm going to drag and drop that over there. Should copy pretty quick. So it's about a gig. It may look really bad right now, but I, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to make it look decent. Okay, so I'm just deleting that. So we'll now import that effect or that thing. Stock assets, stock footage effects, grass plants, paint effects, tree ranch, windy straight, 2K, import, control alt G, bring in at 24 frames per second. Oh man, I hope we did an alpha channel. Okay, and then we'll just make a little project with it in there. There it is, it's beautiful. Now it's not meant to look beautiful. There's no lighting on it. There's nothing on it. It's just a kind of a mess. And the tree, the branch, the leaves look a little snaky wobbly. They're probably too bendy, but that's okay. Because what's going to happen, like, see, they're sort of jerking around. Like, I don't love, look at this guy right here. The noise system, a, a tree would never do that. But what we end up doing is, I'll show you. We'll end up getting rid of a lot of the frames so it won't look so bad. So we have 20 seconds of animation. It's pretty high res. I probably would adjust some things. I'll adjust some things, which will make it look better. And I mean, now I can do a whole bunch of variations of it, right? So as much of a consuming time sink that was, it's still something we can use. So now if I go, basically what I can do, there's two things I can do. <clears throat> A lot of things I can do, but what I'll do first is I'm going to generate an alpha channel, a gradient ramp on it. And this is just a really simple way. See, like, this is the thing I was talking about. See these, like, weird little gaps in between? I don't know why that happened, or I was trying to get that density, that, that to go away, but it didn't, it didn't for some reason. So it looks like I have to triple this thing up a bunch. So it's not going to look super good. This thing will only work as a gobo in its current state because it's got these crawling weird sp circles, which is how the paint effects work. They don't work when in geometry. They work, they work as a very specific function. So I've, I've stacked that all together, so that'll give me something I can work with, sort of. But it's still like, I'll have to fix that. I don't know why that's happening. Um, we'll have to just take the effect off all these things, and we'll probably just embed... This split up. Well, this has just been kind of a, a train wreck of a stream, I'm afraid. All I can say is I'm sorry. All right, let's add an effect. And I'm going to just generate a gradient. As you can see, I still have not gotten that video copilot effects tool yet. 
So with this gradient, all I, I mean, I can use this as just a, a way to, if I were doing branches and tree and trees and stuff that were in a forest and I just wanted to have a simple color treatment on them, this is essentially what I could do. Really basic. And then you can add a texture to them or something. In our shot, things are really quite black and white, so it's really mostly value is going to be what we're paying attention to. So let's bring that blue value down. Okay. So already it looks a little better. Then we do a uh, frame rate effect, which I always do, but I do on this stuff especially because I'm doing animation. It's supposed to look a little more handmade. And on top of that, this it looks like generally kind of bad at full frames. Uh, maybe use like alphas at the apple. I don't know what that means. And if you could rewrite that, I'm happy to try whatever you're thinking. Um, Glassman Mordecai, I think, or Mordecai. <laughs> I'm glad you like watching the stream. I'm sorry. Sometimes I feel like it's the worst show on earth. Um, I might even lower the frame rate of this tree down even more. Let's put it to four. I just want to see what this feels like. Oh, that feels terrible. So let's put it to six. In anime, they do this all the time. They have they have background effects that are really low frame rates. So it's probably just moving too much. I really have to fix those that sampling error. That probably has an. I know this is obsessive. I just want to. I just want to look and see what on earth is making it use so few samples in the render. Brush profile. That didn't, I did the stamp, stamp density and that didn't fix anything. That just made me feel like, oh, maybe it does. I just try to do 10. I thought that did a weird thing before, but maybe it hasn't. Let's render a quick test and see. I just increased stamp density. I thought that last time I increased tap, stamp density, I thought I got more trees for some reason. But the stamp density should be technically what causes those weird little roundy circle things to happen. Are they still there? Are they still there? No, they're not as bad. They're not there anymore. Oh, good heavens. Okay, so I'm going to do this really quick. We're going to work with the kind of crummy, broken version. I'm Yeah, so yeah, I could use what, like an alpha booster for those weird gaps. You're right. Um, totally could do that. So I'm going to do that for our for the version we're working on, but I'm also going to render be render a better version of this out and also cuz I'm seeing some problems already that are driving me a little crazy. First off, the thing is spazzing out a little too much, so I'm going to reduce the amount of turbulence. I'm going to increase on the leaves. These leaves, I'm increasing their stiffness because they're flopping all over like worms. And I don't like it. I could decrease the number of segments, which would make them less flop about -y, But I think I want to just increase their stiffness. Because also, I will lose the number of segments to make them look nice. Um, where is the leaf stiffness? I'm probably looking right at it, and I can't even see it with my eyes. There it is. 0.5. No, now they're like, look like little pieces of paper. 0.3. Okay, so we're getting a little less like floppy aroundness. The thing I just, I, it's kind of bugging me though, is now the leaves don't move hardly. And that's the thing about trees is the leaves are constantly moving more than the branches. And that's what I was trying to achieve earlier by increasing the frequency, trying to get some kind of chatteriness in these stiff little leaves but if I don't make them stiff, they look like little worms flopping around all over the place. And they shouldn't be. They should be like little cards. Um, I suppose what I could do is decrease their stiffness. And we'll reduce the number of segments. What happens if I put one, two? I'm not sure what that'll render like. Those guys are sketching out all over the place down at the bottom. 
zero. Let's have them put zero. They'll probably just be the floppiest little mess jobs ever. Yeah, they're just like flying everywhere. Point zero five. Okay, there's some leaf movement there. Now, all I want to see is what do these things render like when I only have two segments? They kind of look like triangle leaves, like little diamonds. Ugh, three segments. And now they're just droopy little things again. Leaf flatness. Maybe we can reduce their flatness. No, that's not right. Let's put leaf segments to find. I'm just trying something else here. One, point one. I don't want droopy leaves. Point five, point three. Okay, they're not droopy. Let's reduce their flatness. That just makes them look round. They'll probably render round looking. Aggravation. I just, I kind of hate how all the leaves are just sticking up straight. This is definitely not like, mm, it's not the best. Let's increase our size random. That's helpful. I don't know why I didn't do that. I don't love the roundness thing. That's not cool. Let's increase the flatness again. They, they look not good. I wish they were more chattery. This is what I really wanted. But this is like, we just end up down that path I was on before. Like everything's like freaking out weirdly. Like the leaves should be like moving everywhere. But we have this like, we seem to have two options is we either have this, the not the leaves barely moving at all, or we have the chaos leaf mess. Which is maybe better. Let's, okay, I'm going to do this. We're going to decrease the frequency. Sorry, guys. This is the worst. I'm the worst, worst stream ever. Okay. This might be better. We have some wiggly leaf things. That's good, right? We want that. We want busy leaves and a generally moving tree. That's better. Um, I'm already so much happier with that. I don't like what's happening down here, but we'll never see that. We'll just hide that gross mess. Okay. This one's okay. I think we can work with this. I might turn the turbulence down a, point, a little tiny bit so the tree isn't completely and utterly distracting. Okay, and let's see how it renders. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. Okay, I think we should just go with this. Okay, I'm, I'm generally, I'm okay with this. I'm going to stop because otherwise I'm just going to mess around forever. There. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to render it out as exactly the same file. And I'll just overwrite what I have in After Effects right now. But we'll use this as our starting point. And I'll go into here and do what you guys are recommending. Let's see if we can't just boost these alpha channel values up. Let's get rid of that weird, the weird lumps in between everything. It's possible that my brain is just completely idiotic today. It happens where I'm just not really on point. I'm just doing this fill so I can see what's actually happening here. I wonder if we did a min max or I haven't done this arithmetic one. What does that even do? No, thanks. Do you guys know which one you would use to do the, to boost the alpha channel? No, we don't want that one. So I could could boost the whites with levels, but levels won't do it. Levels, unless I'm wrong, levels will just change the the actual white value. So if I turn off fill, it will just it changes the lightness of anything. Doesn't work. Doesn't affect their. Oh wait, unless I did it. Let me just see something. Sorry. Um, let me just see levels. Let's see if we can go to the alpha channel. Yes, we can. That's exciting. There you go. Thank you for the lead on that. I've never tried channels like alpha channel like that. I guess we could also just clip it. 
clip our blacks. All right. Of course, we're getting some obscenities on the edges here, but that shouldn't matter. Let's put this fill back on. So now we got a problem there. Yeah, it's because we've clipped the black right out. So we technically want to just ride the middle. There. Let's see what happens if we do this. Okay, so that's bringing up the edges. Cool. Nice, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mig Mixon, for the the tip I would have I would have got if I didn't figure it out two seconds before you told me. I'm kind of happy I, I figured it out though two seconds before you told me because I was feeling really stupid. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the tips, guys. I'm always learning stuff here, which is super super fantastic. It was the whole point of this whole exercise, is to maybe teach one or two things and learn a thousand. Okay, it still looks like little circles building the whole thing. Look at that thing spazzing out everywhere. Like right here, it's just it's changing shape constantly. Um, but we toned it down. We toned it down in, in actual in after or sorry, in the distort the deformations in the actual thing. So I know I'm going to have a better tree shape soon. So we've got this, which is isn't horrible. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. So the next thing we can do, I think we're running a bit over. No, we're not yet. Okay. Uh, Mig is showing a cool plugin. I'm going to look at it. Whoa. OLM smoother. Sweet. Cool. I gotta check this out. Thanks, man. I'm not gonna install this at the moment. I'm gonna keep this on the on the back burner. I appreciate that. That's super rad. And that'll help that could help smooth things out. So there's a lot of ways to fix this, like this little crummy problem that happened from a bad paint effect. It looks like it's free. Just trying to see where they're OLM open tools. I think I've downloaded something from these guys before. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for sharing this. This is awesome. Everybody knows so much stuff. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do just one thing really quick. I just want to bring in a quick uh a texture. So I'm just going to pull in an ink texture that I've been using. So let's go I and we will import a stock asset texture. And we will import an ink, I think. Ink blots. We could pull in this one, but it's probably super busy. It may be okay if we mix it with a couple things. The full splotchy, ugh, that's not gonna work. That's a bit of a mess. This one's ginormous though. It might just be too big. Um, the other thing we could pull in is I do have washes. These watercolor sheets. I have this one that I've made a medium size. And I can just put this on here and use it as like a little texture spinner thing. So if you go like this, we had a rotation. Let me go wiggle. Let me go 720 degrees times 12. Or not times, comma 12, sorry. Comma 12, enter. So that'll just sort of flop this thing around a whole bunch. I might even just on top of that, actually I might make it even more. Actually, I think I've found when I do that, I even get less variation, to be honest. Let's try this 500. Okay, we're not getting that much. I think I need to do a, put a spin on it anyway. So I feel like, yeah, it just flips back and forth. It's barely noticeable. So I put 720. I've done this before. You can put the number as huge as you want, and you, you'll be surprised at how few variations you get. And then all you do is you just, you um, you can keyframe, or you can you can go, like, if you just go like this, I'm going to do that for 20 seconds, and then we just rotate it like 300 times. It'll just fly around in circles. It looks terrible at first, but once you... Um, 
I guess we can just duplicate this and use it as an alpha mat. And I try not to put the center of the thing because you'll be able to see the spinning. So you just do it like this. What is this thing you've got here? This big mix in that you've made here? Oh, cool. Is this like uh this is like a little flipper thing? You put it in the scale? Where would you put this? I just need to know where you put it. It looks like you say in scale, so I'll put this here. Where did you get this code from? Did you make it? Awesome. One on scale and one on rotation. Oh, okay, perfect. Oh, I see, I see, I can see. Okay, great, this is brilliant. So let's do this. Let's use MigMixin's code. Where'd you get this code from? Did you make it? Cool, this is awesome. All right, let's do this. Let's use this, because this is better than, than what I'm doing. What I'm doing is a bit hacky. Okay, let's use this. You guys, make sure you try this out, because this looks, this looks like it's going to be very promising. Okay, so one in rotation, so we take math floor so oh no what have i done it tried to treat it like a link okay just give me one second i'm gonna i'm going to put this in here and then there we go i can see where you've done your capital letters so this one's going in scale so shift s that'll open scale at same alt click paste the code so and i might have to just reformat some of this since i'm sure If, oh, I see, okay. I'm gonna just reformat this thing. If n equals value, oh, n equals equals zero value. Do I have to do, I, I don't know if it did your little, the brackets, I'm not quite sure if I need to do those or not. Probably, it's probably gonna throw me an error here. Well, that works all by itself, okay, great. How come, I'm curious because I've been doing this a while and I've not seen this before. Um, uh, how come it doesn't care, how come you don't need your if brackets and stuff like that? You know, when you go like if n equals this and then you go like that and then you have your, your, your um, this and then you go like, um, this and then that. How come you don't need to do that? I'm curious. I'm curious as why it's not making us do that. And it seems to be bizarrely okay with all of this. Really? <laughs> You only need brackets if it's more than one line of code. So this is just, it's totally fine with this. That's so weird to me. So this could all just be one line and it doesn't even care. So it could just be this mess. No. What? It's just a big string of, of stuff. It doesn't even care. It's no, wow. Colin Harvey's saying no, no, no. This is not whatever I'm whatever I'm saying is not true. He says yes, it works like that, but there's a big but here. While Colin is straightening us out, I'm just going to fit in the rest of this. How does that even work? Okay, if the command after if or else is only one thing, you don't need the brackets. So adding the brackets when it is more than, when it is only one thing is a bit of a redundancy. Um, I, I typically, like I don't know, I do it anyway just because I tend to, um, for formatting, because this is like kind of makes my brain messed up. Having everything in this weird little list. Right, okay, brackets basically just group commands, okay. 
So it's saying these commands are functions that happen all together than these ones, and I see. Okay, well, we've just made some, there, there is, seems to be some kind of expression here. I'm just, let me just purge the RAM here. We're getting an error on this one. It's probably because I didn't put a space somewhere. I might even just put an enter after this. It's like, it's okay with it, but not okay with it. Yeah, Colin Harvey, I'm having crazy Twitch issues today. And I don't know if, if it's my streams like going down or something. I'm I'm not showing any weird yellow like on my, my program that I stream from. It does show me if I'm having if I'm having a stream issue. I don't seem to be having any, but anyways. There we go. We just need a space here. This is weird. I, I don't like, yeah, the code is totally weird for me. It works. It's awesome. Thank you. No, no, uh, make makes sense. Don't be sorry. Um, this is great. It, yes, it, 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 the code does get messed up in the format. Let me just like, just look at my screen. If you guys can see it. Um, I, I, I've straightened out the formatting as far as it needs to be done for this kind of thing here. So, after you've defined your end value, it puts this, you just make sure you, you can create another line because you need a semicolon. And then you've got this if else, if else, if else stuff that happens. And just, you have to make sure there's spaces in between the else if and it, cause it got all smashed together. So same thing here. I just broke the end value, made sure there was a semicolon doesn't need to have a space and then just put the spaces back in because everything was just sort of mashed like that anyways I'm technically I'm shocked that this works I know Colin is telling me this is this is normal but for me I've never <laughs> I've never done just a, a straight line of code like that for something I would have broken it up for visual sake it's it's definitely probably a little bit better I would advise formatting a little differently. I don't call in. I'd be interested in what you say because Colin Harvey is a programmer. He knows this stuff or they like Colin knows this stuff. I don't know any of this stuff. So I would definitely suggest referring to seeing what Colin has to say about it. So I think what I'll also do on top of this is just add an additional rotation as well because I think right now it's kind of flipping things. So the flipping is great. So right now we have a flip, 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 but sometimes it's going to flip and mirror. Oh, okay, there's a risk because if it's random, you'll get two, f exactly. That's exactly the risk, but not really that much of a problem because I think we can still, because we've, we've dropped the frame rate so low, we can still throw in some ridiculous level of rotation. And that should, Give it enough variety, although I'm sometimes seeing rotation come through. However, this isn't the end of it because, okay, so Colin Harvey is saying, Colin Harvey the coder pers <laughs> is saying that whatever works generally st sticks to what makes it most readable. And I would say for me, this is like a little less readable and I would if if I didn't have to do the brackets I would at least which I think you probably did make me sense and I just so when you pasted it into the into the stream what happened is everything came in like this when I pasted it so it wasn't seeing your enters I guess um so I would I, I guess I would say for me I would probably do something at least like uh that so at least they were separate commands, like separate statements, and I could see what was actually happening. Yeah, there's no line breaks, cool. Okay, good to know. So it wasn't, your code wasn't as as visually offensive as I first thought. <laughs> it, it was a lot better than I, I first, at first imagined. Because I think, I think we can kind of basically do this which makes it a little bit, bit clearer. If this, else do that, else do that, else value. 
because when you when I pasted, it, I was like, man, this this person's crazy. They can just read this and it makes sense. Um, but there's a little deficiency on my part there. Okay, so to just to like help get rid of that weird stagger pausing thing that we're feeling, and maybe just help increase the um, randomness. Usually, what I do is let's just say we'll take um, we'll take a little composition here. And make it just 2048 by 2048. Make it a minute long, that's fine. And I do this a lot. This becomes a texture layer for me, like just texture. I might call it anim texture, whatever. This is how I did the Bambi thing. If any of you guys saw that little deer thing, this is the same, the same approach. So you take you take this like this textured wash we did, and we have it in here, but it's not it's working great, but I need to be able to do a lot more things and I don't want to have to have a 10 million alpha alphas on it. So basically what I want to do is just take this, put this back to no track mat. I'll copy that. I'm going to paste it in here and we'll make sure it's there. I might scale this comp up a little more. Not sure. Oh no, basically though, I kind of want it. We'll just center it. That's fine. I kind of have to because otherwise it's going to cut the edges off. Okay. Then what I do, excuse me, I'll duplicate this, put it to 50%, and we'll just do another one. Pretty basic, pretty pretty simple, a little bit of a cheat. But once, once you get them all stacked together, and you can even change one a little bit. So usually I'll make a composition even bigger, and I, it's okay if I have some edges on them because I just know those edges. I'm not going to put, put frame them there. I just have a good area that's really decent. So you get this crazy mess of a mess, right? And the more of them you do, the, be the better it tends to create the texture boil. So it tends to work a little bit better. So now we can go into here, not this one. Yes, this one. Delete that. Then we take our animated texture and stick it on top. And then we can use this as our, our track mat. Or because it's the same composition as this, we could also just use the effect, the uh, channel effect here, which is um, set mat, which does sort of the same thing. The only problem with set mat is it will stretch the alpha channel. So I'm going to turn track mat off. We can go set mat and we can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We want to take it from tree branch. There we go. And so it applies it to this thing as well. I don't know if it renders faster. I don't know if there's like if it's you know beneficial in any way. So it's just another way to do it. If the layer sizes match. What is the T? Oh, T is the track mat, isn't it? What is the um? What is the difference if you don't have this? Wait a minute. Oh, you don't have to do anything. You just press this thing. So you don't have to do that. Weird. I don't understand. Okay. Oh, it takes the alpha of everything beneath it all the way to nothing. So everything down? Interesting. I just want to see something. I just want to understand this better. Hmm. Oh, of everything. That's crazy. Okay, I see. I see, I see. So right now when I have this radial wash in here, it's also using that as an alpha mat. Oh. Cool. That's good, and it's terrible. It could be good, and it could be terrible at the same time. Okay, so we now have this little thing. So I want to show you one other trick with this. I don't know if it's a trick. It's not. It's not like anything that fancy. Thanks for the tips, guys. I'm I'm learning tons of stuff. Okay, so you have this now. You got a bit of a boil on it. The frame rate. I think the frame rate on this all stuff is low. Yeah, we're at eight frames a second, so it should be like pretty static. It feels it feels like it moves a lot more and a lot smoother than it really does. I mean, we could even go crazier here, but regardless. So now what I'm going to going to do as my last 
Last thing is I'm going to, because we're away from the edges, we're okay. Um, I can do a distortion here and I can do a displacement map. And I can use the texture, uh, animated texture as a displacement map. And then I can crank up its values if I want to, to 10 and to 10. And we'll just center the map, that's fine. Expand output, what does that mean? Okay, so right now it looks horrible. It looks just like a really big mess. But what I'm interested in is I'm interested in the general deformation that it causes to sort of break things up, right? So but we're getting all this mess and that's because of how, how high resolution it is. So what you can do, um, if you want to do a displacement map, it will not read effects. So you can't put just put some effect on this and it incorporate it in the displacement map. It has to be in the actual texture. So usually what I do, let me just create a folder here. I'm creating a folder for textures because this tends to be something that starts to grow and grow as I work. Textures, textures. And then I'll do like, in this one would be, well, PFX for like paint effects. Or I try not to just have an FX folder because that can get a little bit full of all kinds of things. So I have paint effects here. So basically what I want to do is the animated texture. I'm going to duplicate that composition. And I have sometimes a blurry one. I use this when I'm doing reflections and underwater stuff, especially. So you can use this as a blurry one. So add an adjustment layer and go blur, a Gaussian blur and do like 20, which is probably way too much. Oh no, it's not. Let's go 40. So that will smooth out those values a whole bunch. There's other ways you can do it too, obviously. But now what we'll get is if we use, when we go back to this one, and you see that we have that terrible mess that's really hard to look at. If we throw in the blur one instead, just turn it off. And on the adjustment layer, we reference the blurry one. We'll get softer. So we'll still get, we'll get deformations See those wiggly things that are happening? Now it looks really terrible at the moment because it's it's not being posturized after the fact. So it's kind of, I think it's at a different frame rate than everyone else. Yeah. So technically posturized has to go under it. Um, mm -hmm. What's this you guys are talking about where you don't have to pre-comp the effects anymore? Um, are you still talking about that, this, this thing here, this, this little thing? Or are you talking about other things? Okay, so this this technique just applies a little bit extra movement, a little bit of extra randomness on the shapes, and this effect, the the lumpiness of it or the the softness of the deformation, can be directly controlled by your blurriness. So if I drop this to twenty, and we go back here, we'll see a a, a different kind of result. It'll be a little there'll be a little more resolution in that. Oh, okay, and the displacement map effect, you're talking about the source. So that would be right here. You're saying you don't have to... Um, or the source beside the displacement map layer. So that would be... Doo -doo -doo. Sorry if I'm misunderstanding one here. I'm just I'm just looking around to make sure I get what's going on. Oh, I see. I see. So you could use effects or effects and mask. That's interesting. I should be able to include layer effects. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so you're basically saying that if I had a blur on here, I see. If I had a blur on this texture map as well, or sorry, on this this one that I'm using for my alpha channel, um, I should be able to ref reference that as, sorry, I should be able to reference the blur on this texture. Sorry, I'm, I'm fumbling over myself. So let's just, let's just demo that really quick. Even though 
we can't use it in this particular instance because it'll blur up our texture, but we could use the blurriness and source that. So if we take this layer, the animated texture, and we say effects and mask, so we get both now. Is that right? It looks like that's right. It looks right to me. Cool, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Thank you. That is awesome. That's really awesome. Don't see a... Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's great. Source. We'll do this one. So I think I'll continue to just make this blur a little bit less. I want a bit of noise here. So let's see here. Ba -bum -bum. And I might want to tone it down a bit because it's pretty aggressive at the moment. But it adds, a, it adds a little bit extra movement to things. You can also use it to roughen up your edges a little bit. So now we've got quite a bit going on. And we can also take this texture now and obviously just put its blending mode to something different, like an overlay, um, and get rid of its color. You know, just get rid of... You can either do a fill or a tint. I, I don't know. I tend to just do tint because I'm lazy and it's fast. So then we start to get more of this kind of a feeling. So then, I mean, another thing that we can do as well is we can combine that with a painted layer. So if you had painted bushes or something and you wanted to put that in there, so that works too. So if we were to use something like this, for example, um, probably not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to have color in this one, in this actual scene, but let's just like put something in that scene before we end the stream today. I'm sorry this stream was such a rugamaloo runaround. What a ridiculous stream. I learned a lot though. You guys really helped me out. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we have this tree branch, windy straight, and I'll just call this textured. And now for this, we can just drop it in. I do just want it black and white, which I can do either here or I can do here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I could just take this tint here and just go like this. Don't delete. Paste. Okay, so then we have that. Make it 3D. Put it into the scene somewhere. Scale it up. Play with its levels. The thing that really makes this will make this pop after is. It's too busy right now. Let me just warn you, this is going to look kind of crap for a bit because it's moving way too much, which is why I went in and reduced it because right now it'll become quite a distraction. And it's probably actually, you know what, it's probably better as a tree leaf than a bush leaf because bushes don't, I mean, they can, but they wouldn't be flying around like that on you know, just blowing everywhere unless there's just a hurricane down below. So in this one, I was thinking of having it quite close to the camera. I really like these things when they're close to the camera and out of focus. And then I tend to try, I try to keep my, my um, more solid masses of bushes. I try to keep those paintings. But the other thing you can do with stuff like this is if you would, which, which we will do, and I'm going to show you, but I'm not showing it in the stream because it's going to take way too long. Um, what you can do is you can add these kind of little gobo type things. I know this isn't a gobo. This is more like a, a stencil or a layer mask, but you can add them to a big bunch of painted bushes and just highlight little features here and there that are moving. So it can be, it can be kind of helpful. Um, I know this looks like kind of garbagey right now. But which would look cool, um, just bear with me for a moment. We have 20 seconds. The shot's not even that long. This is also why I make them so long. So I'm going to bring one even closer. I'll bring this down a bit. I'll just rotate it uh, the other way because that's the base of the plant. Bring this up out of the corner. 
just like that. And because this one's closer to the camera, and right now we haven't put any lights in, we will eventually. I'm just gonna I'm gonna darken it right down. So as they're getting closer to the camera, they're getting darker. So as you stack these together and start to create some density out of them, oh yeah, and let's just offset the time a little bit so they don't have exactly the same rhythm. There we go. This might take a second to render, but, and also the other thing is, is right now their posturizing is out of sync. Um, I kind of, I like when it's out of sync sometimes because it adds a whole bunch of more texture to the momentum and the movement of the animation. Uh, so I don't always mind that, but if I want the posturizing to be the same, if I want the staggering of the frame, I use a different process, which I'll show you, but usually what I do is I do a nested comp with all the layers as 3D. And I apply a time remap to the whole layer. And then I apply a posturized time effect in an expression to the time remap nested comp. And then anytime, if you have like trees swaying in the breeze and moving a little bit, they'll all have the same frame. They'll change all on the same frame versus being staggered all over the place, which will happen if you do a posturized effect and realign things. So let's just, I'm just letting this play out a little bit so we can see the overall effect. It's a bit jumpy at the moment. I wouldn't say it's not ideal. Um, also, my playback is a little bit staggered for some reason. It's kind of jerking a bit. But anyways, you can kind of see the feeling of it that we can start to get with these really, the trees weren't working. They're not nice. Like they don't look good. Um, they're paint effects and they're kind of ugly. However, once you've done this and, and, and strung them together a little bit and started stacking the scene up, they can really be quite nice little fillers. And because they're not perfect, like realistic trees, they don't necessarily look photographic. There's something a little wrong about them. So there can be a little bit of a handmade feel to it, which can add to the, to the whole thing. Um, I'm just going to take one more. I wonder if my render's finished because I might be able to just replace this thing before I leave. No, it's still rendering. Oh, that's not happy. It's post-processing right now, so it's going, it's going to take a second before it updates the... Um, I feel like this movement, I'm glad I toned it down because the movement's a little bit heavy. This could come up here. And I just want to take one more of these guys and pop it in here. And we'll turn the, we'll reset this here. Put that back to a zero. And I'll just put this into the frame a little bit. And just scale it up a bunch. And we'll see how it looks when it's further away. I'll probably posturize. I'll probably do that thing where I group and posturize because some of the trees we're going to have we're going to have a little bit of a rotation back and forth on them. But it's quite it's not quite necessary. Oh, whoa. It's very excited to show me something. That so excited it stopped everything I was doing. We're on frame four hundred and fifty four. I think we had four hundred and eighty. So a little a little bit longer, not long. But we're not gonna get to it in this stream. I don't wanna wait to have you guys all sitting and waiting. I'll just drag down the brightness of this a bit. There we go, um, and scale it up. Oh, thanks, Migmigson. Yeah, I think uh, as Migmigson saying it turned out pretty awesome, and yeah, it helps. It makes a big difference. So once you take these weird little things that are really ugly and and aren't necessarily even this one, it, it looks kind of sparse and and noisy, but once we've first off, we've done a couple of them. And secondly, you're mixing them with painted ones that you've maybe properly fleshed out and brushed a bit. Uh, what will start to happen is it will look, it'll start to look a lot nicer. And, and you'll get these tiny little accents of movement here and there. Because, um, I mean, obviously you don't want to make all of them like a hurricane, like what I've done a little bit. There's kind of... And you can reduce, just watch your contrast. So if you don't make the contrast too high... They won't stand out as much. Um, I mean, the downside is you don't get that nice flickering of the light as the each each individual leaf becomes 
faces the sun. So you get these weird little spottings, which we could do. We could actually create, simulate that by creating like a noise channel with a, with a, a white on it, you know, a white turbulent noise or something. Totally feasible. Um, right now, this is just, this would be too much movement. So if we had this many objects that have lighting on them, or sorry, this kind of animated paint effect on them, they can, it can get a really busy and, and aggressive, but I'm just going to do this. Like, I don't like this. This is like a gross spray brush in the middle right there. And you can see how much the texture is flying, is jumping around on it. So there's a lot of contrast in that one painting. We'd probably want to reduce that a little bit, maybe even reduce the amount that the texture is on the whole thing to create less flickering depends on the style but overall yeah look at that's like flickering way too much and we're getting that here too it's just it's a lot you see how much that's flickering so we just want to reduce the contrast i'm just going to turn these guys off for now because the flickering is a little bit too intense i could also reduce the texturing and or you know just by re in, you know turning down the contrast but anyways overall i think it works pretty well I'm going to, I, I'll fix that render and I might add a couple more before the next stream. Just so you guys don't have to watch me do this horrible stuff all over again. But th that's the general idea. And you can see like, even just by making one of these things, uh, I have a lot, I get a lot of use out of it. And also this is some of the stuff that we're going to be making available on our Patreon thing as well. So it's, it's, it's not all, you're not going to have to make get Maya to make this stuff. I'm more than happy to share these little things. Cause they're pretty easy for me to make. And then, you know, you guys can just use them if you want them, especially as like little scene fillers that just help make the, help sell the shot a little bit. They're pretty rad. I'm just one last thing before. I know I keep saying like, I'm not going to do any more stuff. We're going to stop. I just want to reduce the amount of contrast. So. First off, I'm going to make this grayscale. And actually, I could do a color tint. I know color tint is not the ideal way to do this, but what I can do with that is I can just push my values really visually and really simply closer to gray. And that will naturally flatten everything out. Matte black too. So I can really reduce the amount of texture movement in that thing. Let's do it even more. Instead of just using curves, which can be a little more confusing. Okay. So let's see what that does. That'll cause less d deformation from our from our displacement map, so we can pump that up if we want. So now it should be a little less flickery looking. Oh, Colin Harvey, I'm really sorry to hear that. I have the, um, I have the same, I'm having this, I'm having a huge problem. It's like dropping like crazy. I'm really sorry that you're, you're having to watch a ton of ads. <laughs> and I don't even know how the ad revenue thing works. So I really hope that I'm sorry that that's been happening. I'm going offline every few minutes here. So maybe they've been hacked or something. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm losing you guys every few minutes. Everything's saying offline. I'm still streaming, but it just keeps popping offline. Um, I'm going to let this render for for just a minute, and then I'm going to get off. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry if the stream's been a little sketched out. I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing or if it's it's something that's happening in Twitch here. Actually, I'll just pull this over so you guys... I don't even know if you can see this because if things are just popping off and on. But essentially, I'm using vMix, and I think I've shown you guys this before, but I have... My stream here right now is saying that I'm I'm going pretty solid. Um, usually if there's a problem, it will tell me that there's the bits are really dropping or something like that. But in general, I'm staying at 3,000, above 3,000. Um, frame rate's been solid the whole way through. So um, not, I'm not really sure what's happening there. But thanks for sticking with and hanging out. Uh oh, I think I just did something really dumb. Trying to move it off my screen, and sometimes it's a little bit of a problem. Mm, okay. Yeah, I don't even know how many people are online because it just keeps locking everything out. Okay, so I rendered six seconds of this while we were talking about my stream. Um, zoom in. Let's just let this go. Oh, what? 
There we go. I know there's a, there's a little bit of a weirdness happening and maybe that turbulent, the, the displacement map. I don't know if I like what the displacement map is doing. I'm going to probably turn that off. Let's just turn it off really quick. I thought it was cool, but it's actually causing a weird distraction for me when I'm looking at the leaves. They're, they're like distorting out of frame rate with, with themselves. Um, I'm going to let this render, and then I'm going to kill the stream. Um, thanks for hanging in there, and I appreciate it. Thanks for the support, and I really thanks for hanging out and all the tips and stuff. It's really helpful for me, and it's helpful for anyone else who watches this this stream down the road. Um, you guys are really great. You're, you're great to have, a, have on to all these projects, and making all my projects better and I hope helping to make your projects better in some way. At the very best, is it shows people what, what to do and at the very worst, it shows people what not to do maybe or saves them some time in the future. I'm just going to see how this turned out. Yeah, it definitely looks better without the displacement map thing happening. Cool. Anyways, it's coming along, coming along, coming along. We'll have a little more to do next time. Appreciate you guys hanging out, and I'll uh, I'll talk. I'll see you guys later on Friday, um, Friday afternoon. <laughs>